Medic! Doctor! Yeah! Today I want to talk about the beautiful Medicine Man and how you should play him in MVM. The Medic is one of the most important classes in TF2, not only for casual but for MVM as well. He is a key component of every team and his importance in MVM is doubled with him being able to revive and shield people from damage. But more on that in just a bit. This class guide is just like the scout class guide, structured in 5 sections, to which I will leave the timestamps in the description. First off, we have the tasks of the medic, second, the loadout choices, third, the upgrades, fourth, the tactics, and last but not least, tips and tricks. With that out of the way, let's start with tasks. The tasks of a medic. As I've already stated in the introduction, the medic is not only able to heal and overheal an MVM, but he can also use a shield, which he can get through an upgrade, and he can revive other players. Healing and overhealing is pretty self-explanatory, though there is a few things you should watch out for in MVM. First, it's a bit of a tricky thing, I call it the packing order. The packing order, as I like to call it, is something that I have in my mind while playing Medic. It boils down to who do I heal in the current situation. My most important target is the team's tank, in that regard it is the heavy or the person that is being attacked by most robots. Right after that I'll deal any damage dealers. And on the last place I will heal NGs and Scout, because those two can usually self-heal. Depending on the situation it can be that I will ignore my packing order, but I usually stick to it. PS, in the advanced options there is an option that allows you to heal without having to hold down the mouse button. This one is really, really useful. It allows you to look around while you are healing someone and it really helps with just looking around more easily. Oh, and another note that needs to be said is overheal everyone around you when your main target is fully overhealed and is taking no damage. Overheal allows you for a higher margin when it comes to taking damage, so your teammates won't die as quickly. Now onto the shield. The shield is one of the best upgrades for the medic and is located on the top right when you're trying to upgrade your medi gun or any of your other secondary healing guns. When you have the shield upgrade equipped, you will see that there's an energy bar on the bottom right corner of your screen. When this one is full, you can press your special use key. That is usually the one where you press in the mouse wheel. Okay, and one last thing about the shield that needs to be said is the shield is only in front of you. Repeat after me. The shield is only in front of you. So if you start looking around while your shield is active, it can be that you will take damage from all the sides that you're not looking at. So always look in the direction that the damage is coming from in order to avoid this problem. The last thing on the first bit of the tasks of the medic is reviving. When someone dies, they drop a machine that starts displaying a hologram of their character that died. If you heal that machine, you will see that there's like a little health bar that is going up and, and as soon as this one is fully healed, the person is revived. Oh, and one thing that might be interesting to know is, depending on which class died, the time to revive takes longer. For example, the heavy has more health, so you need to put more health into this reviving machine in order to revive him, whereas a scout has almost no health and he's almost instantly revived. On to dealing damage. Yeah, damage is the low priority, who would have thought? I mean, you could go battle medic, but this is a bad idea to begin with. Just try to heal instead of dealing any damage. And even if you found out that your shield deals damage, don't do that. No, like, not at all. Bad. Bad player. If you try dealing damage with the shield, yeah, the robots will be able to just shoot through the shield while you are trying to damage them. So your shield is basically just useless if you're trying to deal damage with it. And the last bit on the task of medic is, if there's no one to heal, no damage is coming in, you have downtime, just dance. Like, there's nothing else you can do, just dance your time away. Maybe if you don't have the dances, a general taunt is okay as well. I don't judge. Let's get to the loadouts! In the first slot, you have two choices. The first one is the crossbow and the second one is maybe the blutsocker, but that one is kind of fishy as well. I would personally go with the crossbow. It can heal people from a distance and even if you want to, you can deal damage with it, but you shouldn't. The only scenario where I could see the blutsocker be useful is better medic. But even then, no, don't do that. Like, at all. You can try deal damage, but no. The second one is the one that gets more interesting with the medic. You have three choices. The medigun, the crit squeak and the vaccinator. Maybe the quick fix, but this one's just out of place. The choice here is rather tricky because it really boils down to what your team is doing. Oh, and one thing I can certainly say is you uber helps revive people. So if someone is dead and you need to quickly revive them, use your uber. With that being said, 
let's get on with the first one the medigun the stock medigun is the basic of all mediguns and yeah you use that one when your team is just doing all right and you don't want to affect the gameplay much this one is the least chosen one because it has just so few positive things going on but with that being said let's head to the vaccinator the vaccinator is the one you use when your team is shit at staying alive and if they refuse to buy resistances the ubers help revive people instantly and they charge up super quickly so yeah this one is more of an last resort thingy where you have a really shitty team and you want them to stay alive now let's get to the quote-unquote meta choice this is the crits creek this one is the most used because it, it just helps this one is the one you use when your team is doing all right and it needs to deal a bit of extra damage and don't forget if you have the crits creek and there's a demo on your team crits him before the round starts he can lay crit stickies and you can recharge your crits creek so it's basically extra damage at the start of the round and here we are at the third slot. The Ubersaurus, the one you should choose here. Just like NG and his dispenser upgrade. If you don't use that, I will personally come to you and spank you. This one is just so bloody good. Each hit gives you 25% Uber. And you know, Uber is just basically a free power up if you want to. So yeah, there's that. Oh, and by the way, sentry busters are the one thing you love as medic because they are basically free Uber canteens. You just run up to them and hit them a few times and well, your Uber is fully charged. And hey, they don't seem to mind. They just want to get to their sentry. Hey, we've reached another thing. Upgrades. Let's talk upgrades. Healing mastery, overheal expert and projectile shield are the first upgrades you should do. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior healing mastery? This one is a must. It helps you heal and revive faster in general. And it's just so useful in all medic related situations. Who gives a crap about overheal? Well, I do. And it is for one great reason. Overheal is a damage buffer that allows you to have peeps survive for longer without you needing to heal them. If you have someone that's almost always out of your reach, like a pyro running around before the front line even starts, basically, and he's just like right in there and all those robots, give him an overheal before the fight even starts and he will survive for longer and you know how that saying goes give a man a fish and he won't live as long as someone who got overhealed so yeah the overheal expert just allows you to have bigger overheal on your targets so your target will have more health in general maybe some shield on the side yeah shields you heard me right this ain't just an upgrade this is the next thing to the healing mastery it is the upgrade it is straight up a shield that is placed in front of you when you activate it and i already told you about it earlier this one is just too bloody good it blocks all incoming damage. Oh, and if you want to see how far it goes around you, just taunt while it's activated. This allows you to see it. And it really, really lets you taunt the bots while you're just standing in front of them. After these god tier upgrades, it all boils down to making yourself die less. So yeah, after you've upgraded a bit into these first three upgrades, you should probably look into taking some resistances, maybe making yourself run faster so you can chase after the sentry buster, all that good stuff. But you know, that really depends on your personal preference. Now onto the tactics. And be wary, these are some thrown in tactics that I use. Feel free to develop some strategies of your own. I use the shield to not only save Save peeps from my team. Sometimes a sentry gun needs saving too. Oh, and I forgot about this earlier. Never stand on the bottom of any slope or stairs. The robots will just be able to shoot over your shield. Let's talk about resistances and how you have no overheal. This one is self-explanatory. You need some resistances at some point. You are the only person on the team without any overheal. So you will get one hit by most of those rockets that are going around. Any crit rockets, any crit pills, if you are not really careful. So resistances will help you with that. Each upgrade point into a resistance makes you take 25% less damage. So almost all of them are useful. The only exception to that is the flame damage resistance. Pyros are slow and you can basically backpedal with them because of your S key. So just take a few steps back, relax and go out of the reach of any pyro. Enough overheal will sometimes even save the biggest idiot. I've already stated earlier in this video that overheal is your best friend. And if you have some teammates who just keep dying, one thing you can do is focusing on upgrading overheal earlier than healing mastery because of this. This allows them to survive encounters for longer, so you have more of a chance to react to them taking damage. Oh, and whenever there's downtime, try overhealing everyone. It just is so good, because you can just leave them be, they can live their own life and don't need your healing as quickly again. But with all that being said, I really only do this when I have many people dying rather quickly. Otherwise, my focus is really on healing them back up more quickly. 
Okay, on to the last one. Tips and tricks. Almost at the end, aren't we? Yep, we are. But hey, last but not least, I will tell you about some tips and tricks. Your life matters more than the life of your teammates. You are the only one that is able to revive them and heal them. I mean, theoretically, there's med packs, but who the hell wants to wait behind some cover just trying to get a med pack? And they always need to run back and forth. Y you get the gist of it. It takes time, robots can get past, and you know, it, it just, it is a hassle. So this is my credit when I play medic. I just value my own life over the life of other players, especially since I can revive them, but they can really revive me. A dead medic stays dead, but a dead soldier can be revived. And just like earlier in this video, I will once again talk about the importance of Ubers and how they enable you to quickly revive others. If you have many dead people around you and you have many robots closing in, don't be shy and use your Uber. This one actually helps you revive faster. And remember, you can't live without your teammates and they can live without you. So you go ahead, revive them, and that will make it so that you have enough meat shields around you to protect you from any robots. See, that is how it is. The medic is, in secret, the king of every group. He's the one that chooses who lives and who doesn't. So if you didn't think that medic was cool enough already, hey, there's another reason to play him. You can basically be the reaper of your group. Hey, you made it to the end. I thank you all for watching this time and, you know, leave any requests you have or any feedback you have down below. Oh, and if you want to add anything to this class, just like in the scout video, leave it down below. I'll pin it to this video. I love discussing with the people how to play different classes, you know. And yeah, with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>